Hello investors and welcome back to Just Randy Stocks. During this video, we're going to talk about Proterra. I want to go through some of the economic indicators that could be impacting the price and general stocks across the board. If you're new to the channel, thank you for joining. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. For those of you that are new and you don't already know, give the video a big thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. That's all I ask from you. There's additional details down in the description. Feel free to look at those. You could do that on your own. All right. So economic indicators and my thoughts on the 5-10% adjustment. So what could potentially happen before the end of this year? You know, later this week, who knows when this is going to happen. September traditionally is a terrible month for investing. Just, well, it could be terrible or it could be great. I mean, there's people experiencing different levels of growth just depending on what they're trading. And there's been lots of opportunity to make money in the market. There is no question about that. So if this price is driving you nuts, and I know some of you out there, it's driving you crazy, it might drive you just a little bit crazy for a little bit longer. For those of you that know that this is a stock that you're holding till 2024, 2025, when this company reaches profitability, I hope it'll be late 2023 or we get some indicators showing us that it's getting close. This is one that you're wanting to hold on to. This is a growth stock at a value price, and I believe it's about to get even more valuable or of value. <laughs> so we'll talk about that price action in just a moment. So growth concerns. So generally, this 5 to 10% adjustment that they believe is going to take place in the Dow Jones, which is a weighted index of the market price of the 30 largest publicly traded companies on the New York Stock Exchange. So there's 30 of these big blue chip companies. They have a large market capitalization and stable earnings history. Those 30 companies have a huge impact on the rest of the market. So it can drive general market prices down, but they are going to bounce back up. I don't think we're going to see anything like what happened with COVID uh, when everything shut down because there's vaccinations in place. Now, COVID's still a concern. I think it could be coupled with the growth concerns. But my real concern is the debt, the debt ceiling debate and spending. So somehow this is going to create an issue if it's not handled rather quickly and it could result in something happening in the middle of October. So keep your eyes peeled and really do some reading and research. If you'd like to stay ahead of this, put some money aside because these create amazing buying opportunities. And I guarantee you the smart people are putting money aside to take advantage of these dips. So we could see some red in the market tomorrow, but those are my opening remarks on the economy portion. Let's go ahead and get straight into the technical charts. All right, so the first thing I have pulled up here is on September 7th, we had that huge decline, falling knife, stay away. I was like, stay away from this. Don't, don't even consider doing anything right now unless it's in the $9 range. And the $9 range hit, and you'll see it very respectfully bounced off of this $9 range here, $10. Like when it went below nine, it aggressively came back up and it did this a few times until today where it started trailing off. And now that's why I wanted to give you guys price update. And I drew in some support lines that I want to see it hold $9.10 and $8.92. And the way that I got this was basically I just zoomed out, went back here to our previous levels and I just believe that it'll be more valuable if it dips down into this range than to mess around with it in this open area between 1017 and 910. So I've got a resistance level of $10.17 and $10.33. Now, of course, if it busts this, if it busts through this, then this could act as support and you know, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't come down here into this range, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. So I would say just hold. And if you are buying in the $9 range, you know, great. And I could be completely wrong with these zones, but I would just say be mindful because I know I only cover this about once a week uh, of these, these potential 
previous areas where we did see support. So built built this chart out just using what has happened in the past. That's that's it. Okay, so we're looking at I wasn't if you remember last time I looked at this Bollinger band and I was like, man, just stay away from it because I can't even make sense of the chart. This Bollinger band typically makes sense and you'll see it, it got up here, got up into this upper range, the two deviations uh, of this higher shaded area, this this limit up here, and came back down, but not enough to, to signal a buy. And that's why I'm going so low and back here in the $8 range is I'm anticipating that this potentially goes down. So right now we're under the line. It's really on top of the line. You can't really tell. So this is the best representation of the chart. Feel free to go in here and check it out yourself. But I did the the I put it on three month, and I also put in the fifty day moving average to see if I could make any sense of that. And you know nothing helped me there. So you've got my zones uh, previous before. Now everyone's been talking about how the Dow goes below this fifty day moving average and aggressively bounces back each time and you'll see it's this purple line and right now we're below it could it bounce back after a day or two aggressively or does it further trend down so take your five percent of 34,000 or wherever it's sitting and that would be between that I would just go ahead and do the math uh, of that five to ten percent just that's what people are estimating and start tracking this. We had five days of consecutive loss before we had a bounce back, but you could also just use this to check out how that 50 day moving average, that's what people are watching. So the 8K, uh, you can find your filings, you could sign up for your filings for Proterra and check those out. And that's what I did. I, I signed up for it. I can, I get notified when these things come through. So what I did was I scrolled through here and there's three paragraphs pretty much or a, B, and C, and letter A is talking about Gareth and how he's been named uh, president, and then down here on B, it's got Amy who uh, officially gave her resignation, but is also uh, spending time with the company. I don't know if she's contracting with the company, but effective set tomorrow, she's uh, she's resigned, but she's still going to be helping whoever gets appointed that's going to be new through February 1st. So doesn't look like she's leaving on bad terms. Maybe she's got another project or something else she's wanting to work on. And, you know, she was with the company for four years. Let her go do what she wants to do. Uh, so Andrew is, it looks like he's a, a contractor. If I'm not mistaken, let me know in the comments below if I'm not right on this. Uh, you guys are so smart. <laughs> so Looks like he's getting a monthly salary of $40,000 and he's going to be there until the board is able to find somebody suitable to backfill this position. So I don't see anything too concerning here. Uh, Amy looks like she had an acquisition of 36,000 shares and at today's price that's $360,000 uh, right before she left that may have been tied to, uh, you know, Regular compensation is a zero price here. Uh, AJ looked into him a little bit, didn't see anything that really jumped out to me. It looks he's got a history uh, that might be very similar to uh, the CEOs. So he used to work with, and I think it says it in here. Let me take a look. They might have a history. I think he may have had some influence as to having him uh, backfill temporarily. So they both worked in Navistar, so they might just go back quite a ways because uh, Jack worked there also. So that's what I have pulled up here. Jack had a background in Navistar also. So, I mean, you know, you're, you're going to network. He's probably worked with Jack previously and probably told the board of directors this could be a guy that could be a, a temporary. They, they've had a plan. I'm sure Amy came up to Jack and said, look, you know, got another project I want to work on or got another opportunity. It's obviously not all encompassing because she's still helping the company through this transition phase. So I've seen some people talk about maybe Amy was better suited for 
you know, getting the company to go public. And from an operational standpoint, there might be somebody better suited to move the company forward. And I will tell you that at an operational level, on some director's levels, there can be a huge disconnect between finance and operations as far as, you know, op operations not really understanding the financial picture and then just like really plugging away, trying to make things happen, but really not understanding gross margin and some of the things that operationally need to improve within the company. So this, this can be a good thing. The board of directors has an opportunity to, to find somebody that maybe can have a really solid relationship to get some of those things uh, put together well. Now I figured we could spend just a few minutes for bonus footage just to look at one of the leaders, Gareth, in just a little bit more detail. So I hope you enjoy this. There are three things that I would say are relevant no matter how big your organization is. Number one, you have to create a vision for people that allows them to see in their mind's eye what they are being asked to deliver. Without that, people are lost. Um, and so that applies to any business, no matter how big or small. Once you've created that vision, we're in the business of talent. You, it's a talent war out there today because people are the differentiator. Technology is moving so quickly that companies can bridge a technology gap in days, if not weeks today. So it's all about talent. So you have to pick your team carefully. And picking your team in business is just like picking your team in sport. You've got to pick the right players for the right position on the field to carry out the playbook that you've got in mind, which is the vision piece. So you, you've got to be in the business of talent acquisition and, and management. And then the third thing is violent implementation. You, you've got to make sure every single day that you're paying attention to the detail of getting the job done. Because vision without implementation is nothing. Nothing changes there. So you've got to have both. You've got to say to people, this is where we're going, but you also have to take the journey on. You know, to conquer the mountain, you've got to get up the mountain.